um, or you might have volunteered at uh, one of those spaces or Sankofa or Brook Road or anything like that. Uh, so we've been doing this urban ag stuff for a while and I, I feel like it's important for uh, folks to know that we consider our work part of a movement that has been evolving nationally, internationally even, uh, when it comes to black and brown people taking control over where their food comes from. Right? So, you know, this is not like a novel thing. This is something that, you know, I can go from Boston, Massachusetts to, you know, I can go to San Diego, Los Angeles, I can go to Miami, Florida, <laughs> Chicago, and I can find it. people oh, that man. do exactly the same you thing we are, that we do here in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, I think I got right? it. Right? Yeah. And so that's, in, in, in essence, that's how I define this work as a movement, right? And and so today, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very honored and humbled <laughs> even uh, to be in dialogue with, you know, one of the vanguard in this space, right? Uh, probably about 10 yeah. years ago, I don't know what we Yeah, that lady stuck me with a, with a job. Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't know how many motherfuckers emailed me saying, hey, man, you see right this there, man, uh, All you gotta do is line it up and just keep it there. Ron Here Finley it is, you can zoom it in, zoom it out. Was, or is, I would say, uh, one of the They're most inspirational Yep. New voices when it comes to black and brown food sovereignty and food justice, right? And the reason why I love, I love his talk is because the shit was so plain and simple. But I mean, I live in a lot of these intellectual academic spaces, and motherfuckers use six million dollar words every chance they get, and it's like you know they pay for them. They have to use. Them. Yeah, they I mean like the neoliberal control of the of, of indigenous food systems, and I'd be like, bro, what is he saying? Like, like somebody, like the white folks stole the land. That's, 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 let's get it to let's get to the point. But anyway, um, so when 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 uh, Ron Finley's uh, TED talk came out about ten years ago, uh, it really affirmed for me, a lot of the work that we were doing here, because it was like, yo, almost on some old mental telepathy shit, like that people, like somebody else on a whole on a whole other side of the coast of, the, of this country was banging on the system in the same way it was like literally like creating ripples internationally and inspiring people to do the same. So uh, I'm not going to steal the opportunity from you to tell the people who you are. I'm gonna give because I don't like reading people's bios and things like that. I know. I'm not here to tell them that. Right. Tell them go on YouTube or some shit. Yeah, you know? that's what we do. Google is watch, your watch my masterclass, which was the number one in 2020. Let's go talk your shit. Man. Come on, man. What is it? We'll say it again. Masterclass. Talk this. Universal okay. around the globe, okay. number one okay. in the world in the universe on the planet. Uh, so I got like three people sitting there. Too, so you should take this. <laughs> Yo, so listen. Okay, so this is what we doing. We gonna keep it raw, funky. I just want to know straight up from the from off the rip. Who is Ron Finley? Like, why is Ron Finley? You know what I mean? And what and, and what brought you into this space? You know what I mean? What like what the, what what turned what turned on the light bulb for you when it came to the food justice work? What what is Ron Finley? What is what is a fucking unicorn? There we go. I invented myself. Uh, Mr. Paris in um, Jackson, Mississippi. That's why I was like starting with his book. Finley, I tell him, if you can't feed yourself, you can't free yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real. Who, who out here is growing food? Raise your hand. And the people that ain't, why ain't you? Okay, that's what we need to go to. Because we all uh, are 
most of you guys are still in prison. You're still enslaved. You're enslaved by the food system. You know, what took me where I'm at was, I didn't, the bottom line, I didn't plan. Nothing that's happened was not planned. It just, I just like, this is ugly, we can fix it. I got an arrest warrant for planning on the street in LA. We had these things called parkways in front of your house. I guess you guys have, you know what, you have concrete. And it's the, the strip of grass before you get to the street. And um, I got an arrest warrant. And I did it twice. So, uh, so wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you mean like, a, like the police is getting ready to put the cuffs on? Yes, the grass popo came and they, uh, you know, and, and I tell people, imagine me being in jail. But they're like, yo, homie, what you in for? I planted carrots. Okay? You go on a parkway, you better back off. I'm dangerous. Imagine. <laughs> you know, so no, and that's really, you know, I, I didn't go, but the bottom line is they don't care about our communities. You know, they, the, the bottom line is we devalue our own communities. We don't. You know, they, they don't come in here and devalue them. We do. It's like, they're not coming to our neighborhoods throwing trash in the street, you know? Um, and then once our communities go down and we complain about it being a cesspool in the ghetto, guess what they do? They come in and they do that thing, what do they call it? Gentrification. We don't see the value in where we are. We don't see the value in what we have. We don't see the value in us. What do you pledge allegiance to? What have you been trained since a kid to pledge your allegiance to? Not to yourself, not to your parents, not to the soil, not to the sun, not to this the single most important thing to your life. And everybody, people can try to argue me, <laughs> argue with me about the single most important thing to your life is air. <laughs> you know? And people are like, it's not the single most important thing to my life. My daughter is I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get you on the chokehold. <laughs> And I'm gonna see if your daughter, just thinking about your daughter, she gonna say, no, I say, you're right. It's not the single most important thing to your life. It's the single most important thing to every goddamn thing on this planet. It's air. And there's a like, water's right there. I'm like, what do you think the O in H2O stands for, you clown? You know, so it's, it's us getting back to simple. It's us to having a value. And it's us realizing and teaching our kids, you can't eat no fucking diamonds. You know, it's like what? What is you got a you got you got a, a chunk of gold and you got some mud. Which one is more valuable to the sea? <laughs> and we don't take it there. We don't take the fact that a seed has infinity already in it, already in it. And guess what it does? It destroys itself to give you that. The seed it literally destroys you, you know, itself to give you thousands of more seeds and those thousands of more seeds. Well, imagine if they taught us that in school. That's a, it, it just, it shook me. The one thing that shook me was going to the store and seeing these um, tomatoes in this cellophane and they were perfect. They were all the same. And it says, maybe coated with shellac too. Well, you know, they, there's food great shellac, but what, in school, what we used to do, we had, you know, I was in wood shop, so we put shellac on the wood to make, to preserve it. And I'm like, I'm really, I don't need no shellac on my food. And that's one, that was just, it was a string of things like that that took me, man, you know. But yeah, I, I, I took on the system of LA, got the law changed in LA where you can plant food on the street now. Uh, so, yeah. So, 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 let's back up though. Yeah. Because I know, so like, what, what was know, more, like, well, what's the, what was you, what was the work that, what were you doing before that? You feel me? That like, you know and I mean, because I can tell you, like, before I started gardening, I started, you know, transforming lots. We was doing Happily National Day. You know what I'm saying? And we was, you know, bringing people and doing this, and I'm traveling up and down. And, you know, we doing like movement based. Like, what, what, like, what would just, what space did you occupy? I understand that you are artists. Like, we right? all are yeah. artists. Everybody here is an artist. Either you claim it or not, you are a creative. So tell me a little bit about the art that you do. Well, I started at, um, I mean, I wanted to be a mashed potato. You know, back in the 1800s when I was a kid, it was um, 
you know, I see these fly ass dressed, and you know, they go on to super fly and all that. I'm like, I don't want the heck gear like that. And so at 15, I was like, I'm not going to make clothes. Because another thing, at an early age, I realized that the clothes in the store weren't made for us, they didn't accommodate our bodies, you know. Um, but we don't, it's the same thing today. I mean, even a lot of times, black designers don't make clothes for black bodies because they're basing them on uh, European cuts. <laughs> and we don't have no damn European cuts. So uh, that's one of the things that took me as, as a kid. I realized, damn, this don't feel right. I want, so I started making clothes. I mean, I took a black class and tricked it in uh, college. And I, and I, I realized it put me in a space. I want my whole life to be custom every day. That my door now, my sheets, my everything I want on my chair, I want everything to be ergonomic and fit me. And when I fit like their like their things do. Uh, and it's our bodies are different, so totally different. You know, and, and um, the way we're built. And so you can't expect a, a lot of times to go into a store and have those clothes fit you the way they would uh, fit the people they were made. So, how does, so, okay, so this is, I'm right, so fascinated by this. No, 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 no. It's, it's like, you know, tailoring fashion arts, right, and textiles, right? So, you come to this, you came to this space working with these different mediums, right? But then you all of a sudden crash into this food space unexpectedly. Right. So how how do these worlds play nice together? Like how do they how do they coexist? How do they coexist? How does fashion and the arts and food coexist? Where does fabric come from? Stop. <laughs> fabric comes from the dirt, from the soil. You know, even polyester comes from the soil because it's oil. It's oil based. People ask me, how, how, how can you go from fashion to, to, to food? Uh, and I'm like, easy. Where does color come from? Mother nature. You know, it's all, it's, it's not a stretch to me. A lot of people trying to put that stretch. And I tell everybody, if your ass eat food, if you, is any, everybody in here wear clothes? Yeah. Everybody that don't wear clothes, <laughs> raise your hand. Because if your ass wear clothes, you are in the agriculture business. Then we go. Period. Then we go. You just ain't getting paid for it. But you are in the business because you can choose with your dollars. We don't see it. You know, you are in the business. So with, with, with me, there is no stretch. Right. Fashion is food. Food is fashion. You know, food is beautiful colors. Like you've seen those purple and, and the eggplants and uh, look at butterflies and dragons. You guys got all these dragonflies here. They design this shit. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's in, and you look at some of these things and you're like, a flower, uh, who puts these colors together? You know, so you, I need to walk around. You can't, you can't go and think that, that this is not uh, nature. I mean, you know, everybody here, we gotta realize there's no separation between us and nature. We are nature. We decompose just like Bambi in the forest. Same way. You know, but we, we think it's nature and us. We're over, no you're not. You know, um, and we can get there. So, you have an organization, the Ron Finley Project. What, tell us a little bit about that. What, uh, what does what what does the work consist of in that space? Um, the, the Ron Finley Project basically consists of changing culture. Is what I want to do and, and show people how to be free. Period. I mean, it really don't. It's yeah. Is it food? Food is basically the forest for the trees. The door I'm gonna open. Oh look, I got some tomatoes. They are they're heirloom organic to get your ass in the door. Then I'm gonna shut it and tell you what this is some revolutionary shit. We got to get back to the soil, period. And it's like we have we don't have 
we don't have reverence for the story. You know, it was it was beat out of us. And you got to really like this space we're on. And I got to congratulate you for bringing this back, man, this year. I know what it goes through to organize somebody. So y'all should give D a hand. Um, it's this is this is hard work because I I got to invent that I do. Uh, but no, we need to get back to, to the end of the eye that this is the goal. You know, that, that there's nothing more valuable than this but, except air, but we gotta realize life comes out of it and life goes into it. You know, so how do we train kids to have uh, value for the soil? What happened to me is, when I was here, I had a, I had a lawn care business in probably 11 or 12. I, I couldn't imagine how this stuff would look what I did, but we used to clean people's flower beds, and, you know, and they pay us 50 cents, we used to mow lawns. But just imagine if we took that shit the next step. All the leaves we waked up, all that grass we, 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 we got paid to cut. What about if we took that, then put it in the trash, and turned it into compost, and sell it back to the people who we, uh, we got it from. Just imagine just the economics there. So every child that you know would look at a leaf differently. They would look at grass differently. It would be a resource because we showed them how to turn it into what everybody loves. Money, money, cash, moves, everything around me. Why we get So listen, uh, so it's that man, so I, I want every school in the world should be teaching kids how to be uh, entrepreneur. You know, every kid, every, every. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. An entrepreneur, let's go. <laughs> oh, you heard no, that? I heard that, I caught that. It wasn't pronunciation. <laughs> you know, it was real. It was weird everything based on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So no, imagine if we trained these kids and had them and at seven years old with worm farm. And they realize that worms is, is having so much sex that they're gonna multiply and they give them their trash and they're gonna multiply some more. So now you got three things you can sell. You can sell the worm cast, their poo. You can sell the worm and you can sell the worm tea. Yo, and I'm gonna keep it gangster with you. Uh, I went to Home Depot the other day and they were selling uh, earthworm, uh, worm cash. Yes. Seven dollars a pound. Seven, and this is, and so what's fascinating about this, for anyone that has, I don't know folks, if you compost, so compost is basically your kitchen scraps, right? So the food that you might've taken out of your, that, that you didn't use when you was cooking, you know, that you toss in the trash. And if you keep worms, we got a worm bin in the back of our house. So if you were to compost those kitchen scraps with those worms, if you made a pound of compost from those worms, that's $10 per pound from your trash. Right? Game! You feel me? This is insane. And so, what's, so uh, you know, segue, you know, marijuana just got legal here in Virginia, right? And so, guess what? The, guess what? The marijuana cultivators is trying is jumping up and down to get the earthworm castings. Why? Because the earthworm castings is some of the most potent fertilizer for the growing of the plants, right? So this is all fascinating. I love it. I'm glad that you brought entrepreneur into the conversation because I mean, look. I've been trying to kick this game. I've been trying to break this down and kids like, yo, they don't understand. And not just kids too. Like, I actually, I talk to the kids and the kids get it. I try to talk to adults and be like, yo, man, no, this is real. This ain't like a game. Like the dude that opened up his hydroponic grow shop on uh, the boulevard, he was skinny before he opened his store. He's fat now. Does that, did anybody catch that? Like, he was skinny. Last year, I saw him last week. This dude is chunky now because he's been selling stuff like earthworm castings and grow equipment for people to. Anyway, all right, I'm on the no, side. But so that, yeah, that's so. that's that. I mean, we we would not only be creating. Uh, to me, the that's the sexy part that we they don't give us. When I was in school, they took the petri dish, you put the uh, seed in it with the wet paper towel. Did they? Did yeah, you do yeah, that? yeah, I did. And that. you I see it, bro. It's like, whoa, wow. Okay, next. 
It's like, whoa, what do you, what do you mean uh, next? Right. Where, 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 where's the sexy part of that? That's where I'm at. So it's like, oh, bring, run that back. Right. Okay, so now there just happens to be a garden at the school. Right. And we're going to show you the blessing and the arithmetic and multiplication. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take this one seed that destroyed its give new seed and we're going to put it in the soil in that garden right. and then it's going to give us tomatoes peppers whatever the hell it was and they're going to get in all those seeds all those plants are going to have seeds in those okay so why that's that's in, in arithmetic that's the lessons in economics it's all there and they didn't give us you don't give us just this half-assed lesson right. you know what i'm saying so that's what that's what i'm trying to do with, with special rules you don't have to be on those corners right. you know selling some bullshit right. you know so it's, it's like i tell people i want the game fights to be over who got the biggest to, to, to make right you know so right. that that's how we create i think a respect for for food a respect for self a respect for the, this planet and the whole process of this magical thing that we call growing food that's just right. magic you right. can't right. Alchemy. So, I mean, that's what these schools need to have. They need to have a program. Every that's why every school needs a garden in it, and not some garden that the kids walk walk by. It needs to be a garden that the kids participate in every day. It is part of the curriculum. It's not something that oh, look at the pretty corn. Because I I put in garden and the kids. You know, oh, they, the kids can't go in the garden. Have you lost your mind? Like why not? What, what, what was the purpose of it? Okay. That's, I think that's that's what we want to do. Take this this free stuff, these free elements, the, these free resources around us, and show these kids how how to turn it into paper. Check. So uh, I know your life changed, you know, in the world. Your life moved in a different way after the viral, the 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 the, 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 the TED talk went viral. So what has that experience been like? as you know somebody that's rooted in your community you've been you know doing your things you know way before all this so once you know the messages of your work started getting out how did your life change you know what I'm saying? how did things like what was what what has that been like um it's been it's been beautiful it's been um i mean the places that i get got to visit you know from doha you know, in the Middle East to Co Copenhagen and to, you know, I, I got, now I got folks, you know, speaking at the University of Sussex. Wow. You know, just because I, I was growing food on the street. I mean, you got to think about this. It, like, the, I, literally my first, you saw my second, you didn't see my first TED. And the first TED, it was like, it was in Canada. And um, I was like, I was, I, you ever look out a window and see your reflection in the you also see what's out. So I was looking at the harbor in Vancouver. Okay, yeah. And I was like, damn, dude. Some hater reported you to the police. Now you're in this suite on the 21st floor overlooking Vancouver. Harbor about to get tough. I love America. <laughs> you know, so I mean, how's it been? It's, it's been... Um, I mean, the, the fact that I get to, it's been life altering to me, but it, the fact that I get to alter why that, that I get people like, you know, you changed my life. You made, you made me realize what my, what my mother gave me, my father gave me, you know, when, and I, I didn't value it. You, you showed me the value in that, you know, um, people quit, dropped out of college and started gardening and managed gardens and I'm like, damn, these people really think I know what I'm talking about, you know. But it, 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 in my life, man, it's, 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 I'm going to tell you, as you know, it's weighty, too. Yeah. It's a weighty part because people have this perception of you that you don't have of yourself. You know, and, and they think, they think something else. And I, I'm, I'm, to me, I'm as normal as they get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember I saw you at the uh, American Public Garden Association conferences a couple years ago uh, and that that room was like <laughs> that, that was an amazing night I just say this uh, it was a very monochromatic room right uh, so, <laughs> so you know in the no, they didn't I thought that was fucked up I well, excuse my language I was like they should have filmed that that was actually epic right <laughs> but I'm, I'm laughing because you know 
the the so the horticultural world for those who are not aware like the horticultural world has um, it's classes right so it's like your landscaper dude that worked for James River landscaping no 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 it's 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 the it's, it's your cousin and your uncle that got their uh their lawn care business then it's like the James River landscaping company then it's like um, your parks and your city but then the next layer is when to start getting really big money is like when you get to the botanical gardens right so the botanical gardens are like if England got castles right then America has botanical gardens okay so former plantations are botanical gardens in this country right so uh, for example in uh, Middleton South Carolina the first botanical garden in this country yeah right. crazy part about this plantation is that the shit didn't the build the literal landscape was carved into the earth by black hands you could go you go to this space and there's like I don't know how to explain it. It's like lakes that were dug by black people, right? I mean, this, these lakes did not exist until our enslaved ancestors went there and carved it. But when you go to their conferences, there's no black people at all, right? I mean, it's a five, seven, it's like 700 people in the room. And I've counted, like I, I count when I go to stuff like that, it's like five of us, right? And so um, maybe, right? It's maybe three, like, cause I don't know, I can't tell this person, you know where. Um, <laughs> um, so we was at the conference and uh, uh, Ron was speaking, right? He was, a, he was a priest, he was the keynote for their conference. And I swear to God, it was the most magical moment that I've ever experienced in a fully white space as a black person. Because here you got this black guy from Los Angeles, like keeping it 100, you know what I mean? And keeping it authentic and not changing up, like not code switching, none of that shit, right? I don't know how to spell that. Brawski, you should have seen the faces of the people at the table with me. I was like, I was all smiles, but you know, so I, I bring that up because you know we live in this society that's ultra classes right and even though we do this food thing right and we crack open earth to feed our communities for sustenance like there's a whole nother space where these folks like they access these spaces purely for luxury you know what i'm saying it's not even it's not it, this is like i just want to flex how much intergenerational wealth I got. I throw my name on this joint and you know, we got a private party and you know, I invite all of my other wealthy friends. In this space, like I understand that there's a lot of that that also comes your way. Like how does how as how do you navigate the voyeur I, I like to call it voyeuristic. It's like like, we got the elephant man over there. Yeah, dance. Go ahead, dance. Go ahead, tap dance for him real quick. Let me see what you. Let's, let me see what you can do. Like, how do you? How do you experience that space? You experience. But I got. I wasn't gonna say what I said. I hope you realize. That. I didn't have no prepare. No. So we get. I get to this. This growing conference, you go, this I, do. I appreciate it. Yeah, run to the I can't blame you. Well, I, I, I got to gotta start with a give a uh, shout out to the three white people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I started. The Valero, I had to drop. Yeah, like how the fuck yeah, you gonna have? Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, horticultural it's, 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 conference. It's, it's, uh, Ain't no black people here. It's just water. You know what I mean? We it's showed like, you guys how to do this. Cold. Okay? We did, and I, it was like that. But this I went, is the room. And like, <laughs> I don't navigate to let self be true. What have you lost and what have you gained if you lost your soul? And I'm not going to go somewhere and, 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 and 
al alcoholism and drug addiction and, uh, and, and so I can feel better about what I did. No, I'm not going to, you take me the way I am. Unilever. That's it. It's like, excuse me, all the kids, you know, I was in Unilever. People know what Unilever is, one of the biggest corporations in the world, and you're probably wearing their lotion or eating their Ben's and Jerry's or all oh, some of the other shit. Like that. And I, they're like, what do you guys think about us? And I said, I think you motherfuckers own the devil. <laughs> I said, I'm not having full on sex with you, but I'll take my socks off. <laughs> I said, okay. I'll take my t-shirt off too. I said, Shh, I'm not. Okay, I'll take my, and I stretched it out this long. And I said, okay, I'll take my pants off, but that's it. And you only get a quarter inch tongue. And you don't say this to a room of, <laughs> of executives, <laughs> but it was like, to me, D, what I'm saying, okay, now that I got your attention, you didn't, they ain't they heard it like, who the hell is this? And some of them are laughing, some of them are shocked. And I'm like, you have, I'm here because we can write the, the document that's gonna change the food system and put it in the work. If you choose, you have the money, you have the power, you have the bandwidth to change the whole food system. I want my name on that document because I want to be a part of that. That's why I'm there. So keep it real. I don't, I, and I talk, I'm not here for your money. I know I have a value, and that's what you, all you guys need to start doing is knowing that you have a value and getting compensated for it. Okay, because we don't, because they're gonna go, oh, we don't need you, we can go to the next black. Uh, the Ron, oh, Ron's too expensive, we're gonna go to D. Uh, D's too expensive, we're gonna, and that's what they do to us. They, it's like, I tell them, what would you pay Brad Pitt? That's what the hell you gonna pay me. Saying, and when the same car you send to pick him up, same plan, everything. That's how, because I know I have a value. If you, if you didn't, why would I be here? So the people, you are like, oh, they don't expect that. I don't need you. You didn't make me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's what you guys, you gotta realize sometimes you gotta say no. Because that money, again, what have you gained if you lost your soul? I got a Rolls Royce, but I got a drug addiction now because I did something that's against my morals. Yeah, so no, it's, it's not, it's not, I don't, I don't, I don't have to navigate. Cause, Cause, I know. I mean, I, I told you, I had the executives from night, from night get my spot. Yeah, and it's like I'm not. I don't care about you no. Know, I don't care about y'all. I don't care about your money. Stop stealing our culture and not, and, and not paying us for it. Pay creatives, respect creatives, and they don't. None of these corporations don't expect the makers. Respect the makers and compensate them. Pay them. You know, we're not here for your gratification to, to just, oh, thank you for letting us steal your culture and selling it back to you. So look, this is, um, this is also a page that I've also um, been wanting to dialogue with folks that's in this food justice space. The food, food. Food. In justice. Food in justice. There is no food justice, D. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's not. It's not. We work in food and justice until we, until <laughs> until, until, we until the shit gets <laughs> there. There you go. Um, so you know, there's a there's a there's a space where uh, uh, like folks engage with this work, and like you said earlier, you like use the tomato to get people in the room. What I've what it was what has been challenging for me is that, and I don't want to say it says challenging because I really don't really see it as a challenge, but it is an interesting phenomenon to watch that people like to stay at the tomato. You know what I mean? Like they want to talk about how beautiful the tomato is, and then I'm like, well, there's a under there's a whole thing underneath this tomato that we need to talk about, right? So. So I say, for example, uh, you brought it up earlier. You said, well, you know, folks have this uh, trauma related to the land, right? Um, and, and we're working to try to help heal people's trauma related to the land. Like that under, that's the underbelly of the tomato for, for, for us. So when it, when it comes to this work, as you engage, not just, not just the corporate folks, because I, I mean, that's, for me, I mean, you know, that's, it's enough, I, I get that enough, 
but my day to day is not that. You know what I'm saying? Like my my, my regular every day is like. Right. 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 So how do we make this sexy? How do we how, how do we make this sexy, how do we make this sexy as a forty ounce? How do we make this sexy as a bloom? How do we make this sexy as the new Jordans? Right. How do we the make this sexy? Because it's the Yeezys. They don't even oh, care about Jordans. Care about Jordans? I don't think so. What? Well, I might be wrong. It might be some. Some folks they, they might have the thirty six. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. But how do we do that? I mean, how do we we? I mean, that's the that's what we have to do. We have to take this brilliant and brilliant marketing. There's a story. There's a story I tell. You. Long Branch Elementary School. Long Branch Elementary Long Branch Elementary School. Middle School. And everything was Fortnite. I'm asking the kid, what's the single most important gift in Fortnite? So some kids see a picture of a bar and they're going to swim in the pool. And he's like, are you rich? What? Hold up, wait a minute, pause. Your garden is in Fortnite? No, no, Oh, about no, the same, no, 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 no. I was like, no, about I was doing him. a talk. Oh, okay, I'm about to say, where my son at? He's he saw, here. He, saw, he saw a picture of the garden. Uh, it's for I'm in all the time. It's four hundred fifty. There we go. Okay. So you see the picture. He's like, "Are you rich?" I said, "Thank you. Yes, I am rich." I said, "But so are you." He mm. said, "I'm not rich." I said, "You are." I said, "You think money makes you rich?" I said, "No." I said, "You have social capital. You got, there's other kinds of resources." I said, "You are rich just because you have a value just being here. You know, you have an intrinsic value." You know, you need to realize that value. He said, I said, I know, that means nothing to you. He said, his little asset. I said, you want this, you want that, and you want diamonds. He said, yeah, I want diamonds. I said, you want diamonds? I said, why do you want diamonds? Because if I had diamonds, that means I'm rich. I said, okay, okay. I said, you got $550,000. And he goes, yeah. And the beauty about that, this kid, you could tell, he thought, he imagined, most of the time. He imagined it, you could tell by his face. And I'm down there with him, I'm not on the store. And I said, you go to the you go to the diamond store, and it's beautiful. Everything is crystal and shiny and glass and sparkly, and it's just beautiful. And then you go to the counter and say, I have five hundred and fifty thousand dollars and I wanna buy a diamond. And so, so they bring you out three diamonds, bring you out a pear shape bring out a rectangle and a square. They tell you, this is deep, flawless, such and such cut. You don't know what the hell they're talking about, but you Yeah, you want a diamond. So you pick this, the rank, rectangle diamond. So they take the diamonds back, bring you a diamond, put it in a beautiful box, beautiful velvet box, and they wrap it, and they give you a diamond. And you give them your $550,000. And he goes, yeah. And I did a three count on this little ass to myself. I said, okay, who is rich? I got real class said, who is rich? And it was a silence. And then all of a sudden, just a crescendo, screams and laughter. <laughs> and to myself, I said, gotcha, little ass. And I told him, I said, they gave you a rock, and you gave them $550,000 for it. I said, it's just a rock that came out of the earth. It came from the mother. You don't appreciate the mother, but you appreciate what came out of it. I said, it's a rock that other people put value on. You know? <laughs> and, I said, and I said, the data, I said, so guess who you just made rich? And then I took him, I took him to the, 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 the diamond advertisement, like spend three months salary, Oh no, it's four months. Oh. Spend four months salary on your engagement ring. Six sixty years is commercial ring. Spend four months salary on your engagement ring. Nobody knows the brilliance in that. Nobody knows the, the, the brilliance. Anybody knows the brilliance in that? They don't give a fuck about an engagement ring. But they know if you spend four months salary for your engagement ring, guess what you're gonna do for your wedding ring? And they never mention nothing about a wedding ring. That's brilliant marketing. So I tell you this, D, is you say, how do we make it sexy? We gotta do these same marketing plans that they made McDonald's sexy, that they made these diamonds sexy. It's the same 
sis, we just putting another product. How did they make the Marlboro Man sexy? Crying. What was that? What was that one? That horse. But how did? But I'm just saying. Let's look at these sis. Let, it's the same. It's just a, she, switching the product out. What I do with the kids, with the land, it's like that. I ain't no slave. I'm like, actually, you are. <laughs> right now. It's like, I ain't digging it. I ain't touching no soil. I said, well, actually, if you don't, you are a slave. I said, just imagine. I said, how do you think the boy, the people got the, the big house? The white, the big old house, the big house. I said, how do you think they got it? They got it from the land. Yeah. The labor of the people who were enslaved helped. But guess what? If they wouldn't have the land, they wouldn't have had nothing. I said, so imagine if you had the land, what you could have. You could have the wealth. You could have all that, all you want if you had the land. And that's why I like, don't sell your land. So grandma's house. No, yeah. Don't sell grandma's land. Yeah, at all. You know, it's like it's the, the hood ain't the hood. You know, and that's where we lose, lose track. Because I started earlier, they devalue our neighborhoods by not giving us service. And all of a sudden, the house was a, you know, a million six, and where I'm at, which was the hood hood. Yeah, and we rolled down uh, Hall Street on the way up here. I was like, yo, you know, that this building's on Hall Street. I'm, I'm born in Richmond. This building's on Hall Street that have been empty since I was 12 years old. I'm 42 now. You know what I'm saying? So you ride, you're riding down an area that I feel like, and I think I, you know we can do the, we can do the math, we can do the. They got the same thing in Jackson, Mississippi. I think it's Ferris Street. Mm -hmm. it's like it was the main drag, yes. and it's like you see pictures of how vibrant it was, and, and it looks like that you're talking about here. So we have these in communities where we were uh, prominent, and people that bring it into. Stop calling yourselves minorities. We ain't no fucking minority. They are. <laughs> okay, so, because what minority means is you less than, you're smaller than, <laughs> you're weaker than. It's a negative, and it's racist as hell. You know, so stop, and, and it works because you're already saying, you're already talking up to people because you're lower than them. Right. And you're looking at them as, oh, you minorities. It's like, so don't t teach it, and it's hard to break it because it's been with us so long. Right. But we have to. Don't let your kids use that word. Because you measure yourself from this planet, not from this little island that we're on called the United <laughs> States of uh, Racism. You know, we, you have, to, you have to train these kids and yourself to stop using that word, minority, because it means you're less than me. You're, you're more valuable. Than me. Uh, so look, we, we, you know, we're pushing up on uh, 45 minutes. So I don't want to drag us too long because we can go all day. I want to I want to talk a little bit about this uh, collection work that you do. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not, but um, so yeah, what collection? So you know, I'm a. I, so let's go, back to, that. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. It's that simple. I'm trying to change people's DNA. Right. I'm trying to change people's culture. I'm trying to change that show kids that nothing is more valuable than you. Nothing is more precious than you. Okay. Nothing nothing is more brilliant from you. Because we don't get this. These kids don't realize this light and this energy from this ball we're spinning around. That they have the same energy that everything on this planet has. That everything around them, these trees are alive. They're alive because we're spinning around in a ball in outer space looking for aliens. That shit makes sense. We're aliens. You know what I'm saying? We need to show these kids that they're magic. What I love about the work that you do, as I was peeping some things that you had did over the years, is like the integration. So it's not every day that people integrate these multiple mediums into the work, right? So when I say multiple mediums, like for example, the shovel project, right? The the, the artwork on the on the on the uh, on the, the picnic tables, right? Being intentional about fusing different mediums together. I feel like that's the that that activates a different type of thinking for folks because it's not just like oh yeah we're gonna go plant this row of beans it's like yeah we planted this row of beans but also you are an illustrator you know what I mean I want 
I want to see your illustration techniques. You feel me? And, oh, you design clothes. Yo, so come over here. We're going to do these jackets. We're going to do these shirts. We're going to do these pants. And we're going to flex all that in the same pot. Because it all is in the same pot. <laughs> there's the, there's, again, with the separation, I tell these kids, there is no box. Right. Just think. Just think outside the box. Let's try this. Ain't no box. Because, you know, with a, with a plant that stays in a pot, mm -hmm. those roots are going to still grow. Right. And they're going to grow. And they're going to grow. And they're going to grow. Mm -hmm. And they're going to start choking the life out of that plant because you don't give them a chance to grow. And that's how I feel about this whole box. Who came up with that? Think outside the box. So, no, it, it all goes together because it all does go together. Right. We, yeah, we, we separate. Make, we separate. We separate. Right. We just talked about that with the fabric and the colors and the art. We just it talked about the maternal health thing. Oh, all that. Take all that shit and, and, like and with that, I was thinking too. I mean, men weren't the representative. My seven-year-old son gave birth to his youngest brother mm. at seven in a water birth. Mm. You know, and so he was like, "Just keep pushing, man. I see the head." I'm like, "Who the hell are you?" <laughs> <laughs> At seven, wow, yeah. months months earlier, it's like, mommy, take the baby out. I want to play, and I'm like, to, to to this guy, he's in the tub. Yo, come on, we gonna do this. You know, he tells his mama keep. He was the first one to mm. hold his little brother. Mm. But then I had some women like, ooh, you let him see us. That's disgusting. You let him see his mama like that, and I'm like, that's what's wrong with us. Why wouldn't he? Right. Now he know where life comes from. Right. Now he know where he. Come, you wanna come up? <laughs> and and it, it's like that so no some of us are all of my sons were um had them at a birth center you know so all, some some believe me some of us are involved and i, I want people to know that that we care about our kids you know real my, my kids are right now they're killing the game and i know a lot of it is because their scars that I got that they shouldn't have to get, and I didn't allow them to get. Right, you got to improve on the design. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. You know, and they now they have a they have a, a reverence, they uh, a respect and an admiration for each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love your son's artwork too. Yeah, so yeah he's a wow. I got two of them. They're playing. It's killing them. Okay, it's killing. Them. And I mean, a lot of that came from operate from happy. It's like basically, don't do shit you don't want to do. Mm. I mean, if it don't make you happy, don't do it. Mm. It's real simple because mm. we don't know how long we're here. It's like I was talking about somewhere early. Everything we do from elementary kindergarten is for the future. Mm. It's not for right then and right there. So we don't, we're not trained to enjoy the present mm. for what it is. Because everything you go to college, what to get a job and right. to get a career, and then and, and what do we do? We go and we get to these places, these white institutions, and then we let them show us what success is. You know, I it's like instead of having your own the definition of success, I woke up this morning, I'm successful. I don't know what it holds. Not to hurt that bad, you know. Uh, and so we let we set. Everything has been set up to us for what success is. You do this, you get this, you go to this, and 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 I, it's something I do when I talk to college kids. What, what are you gonna do when you leave here? Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. I said I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna start at the sub basement of some corporation. You're gonna go, and then maybe a year and a half later, you get to the first floor, but then you're gonna see Olivia. You got your cubicle. You got your little. The, the, what they call cubby, yeah. but she has an office with one window, mm. and she's got a, a she's got she got a fake Gucci watch. She painted some red bottom shoes, <laughs> you know, and she wears Ellen Tracy's like third line. Mm. I said, damn, she's the assistant manager, assistant manager, assistant. Mm. So he said, damn, so maybe a year or half later, you grow, you grow, and they. Damn, but then, okay, you get your one window. Right. But then there's Michael. You see, Mike, he got two windows. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, it's the steady pursuit of another but, but person. They never, they never see that. They never see that, D. They never see. And so I got to get all the way, and I tell you, you know, he's got the BMW 3 Series, and, you know, this. You got the fake PSJ watch and the purple power tie, and, and you know. 
then they're sent there. She got corner office, four windows. She wears Versace. She got seven series BMW. You know, she, she got a, a Piaget. I said, you you get where I'm going with it. They never know. I said, you'll never be successful. You'll be on a hamster wheel the rest of your damn life. I said, that's not success. You know, I said, you'll be on a freeway, <laughs> an ant farm for the rest of your life. And I said, you decide what your success, you're letting them decide, because then you're going to hit the glass ceiling. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're a woman, and, you know, we, women can't, or you're, you're black, and, you know, and you're, or, or, you know we, we've never done that before. You, you're going to have to wait your turn, you know, so it's that dumb shit. So it's like these kids. We need to define our own self, success, and what makes us happy. Self-determination. There. What they say, Kuja Jaglia. I mean, I, 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 I feel like that is an awesome note for folk to take from this conversation. Like, that's really, we're, we're really about the work of, like you said, like, expanding our consciousness or opening up our minds or like what the what the what, what the black lives matter and all this last week radical imagining right that's the piece that i love about what these what, what younger these younger activists are talking about like let's radically imagine but what shit could be you know what i'm saying but we get radical why is it radical why I mean, is it radical that you care about me? Why should that be right, radical? Why is it like, Arun, we want you to come talk about critical thinking at USC. Okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, give me like, I don't know, give me like $60. Okay. And it'll be, well, we want you to talk for 45 minutes. I'm like, mm, I could probably do it in, I can stretch it to five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, because I will, I look around, that's a good 30 seconds, and I said, they want me to talk about critical thinking. Mm. And I said, thinking is critical. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my check. <laughs> check. It's like you got a class on critical thinking. I mean, and that's how desperate that the, the, the shit is. And the classes are free. You know, there's, it's like, let's just think. I want to move this over here. Guess what I do? I don't need an app. Right. You know, it's like, it's like, pick it up. Pick it up. No. It, don't, it don't work like that. No. So now we have critical thinking. Is, not thinking is critical. So look, so, uh, yo, this has been amazing. Uh, first of all, uh, how do people, what's, what's coming up next? What's, what, what's, what's, what are you excited about? Like in in terms of your work, like what what's like that thing? Like you like y'all? Like, you know, that's that white boy question. Now. You know, is all, it? you know all the white boys do that. So they do so, that. So what do you? I'm genuinely interested. So no, they all no, but that's the new question. That's the first question when they go. So 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 what's exciting for you right now? Oh shit. You know. <laughs> you know. So 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 what are you looking forward to? Oh, oh. I'm looking. I want somebody to ask me I'm that like, question <laughs> so I can go in. What are you looking forward to? <laughs> I'm very excited about land. I got some money coming, <laughs> and we about to do this housing shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, I'm very, uh, look, my sister, I got, <laughs> you know, we got nine acres of land, and, uh, whoop, and whoop, Jessica, whoop. we about to build a neighborhood. Whoop, whoop. I'm very excited about that. I like to talk about it. anybody want to talk about it. Anyway, yeah. I, no, 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 I, I'm real. looking forward. To like, wake, I give a fuck. I'm like, looking. Give a fuck. I'm looking. I'm forward to waking up in the morning. And that's that's real because that's again it, we we that other shit is living in the future. You know what I'm saying? So it and I want to be present. I want to enjoy this. Yeah, do we have stuff and we plan in the future and stuff? But I mean, um, I mean, what we the work we both do is man, it's 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 attentive to like no, right? it's it, yeah, and it's people don't see the weight in this. And people don't see the. the the hardships, you know, in this. People don't want to do this. I mean, how do we change people's DNA is what we're trying to do. You know, and when you do, and that one person sends you this long ass diatribe and tell you how you just changed their life. Uh, I mean, it may, okay, okay, I'm doing something. Right? Some, somebody's listening to me. But how do we, how do we get people to um, stop poisoning themselves? You know, how do we get people to realize, how many people know the, the, the four and five digit code on your fruit? Anybody, any, raise your hand if you know what they stand for. Exactly. 
That's what I'm talking. You, you almost think you know what it means. <laughs> so, with this five, five, five digits to start with a nine is what? Yeah, she knows. See, you guys need to know this. When you see those stickers on all your food, it's telling you this is garbage, <laughs> this is organic, and this is GMO. GMO has a special, and if you don't know what GMO is, you should if you're an adult, and you should be teaching your kids how to be healthy and stop stuffing this purple and Kool-Aid and all this other shit down their throat. You know, we the only way this culture is gonna change if we're here to change it, okay? And if our if our offspring are here to change it, uh, we get, we can't keep on with, with what, the way we've been doing this. And this is not talking down to people it's like, oh, you're you're talking. No, it's not. I'm trying to say I'm trying to save people's lives. I'm trying to I I because I want to be there with you. There we go. I, if I bake a cake, I want to eat a piece of it. It's like, I hope that cake in the future tastes real good. <laughs> yeah. No, if I change something, I want to be I want to experience it. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, 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 I'm doing no. this for the future. Yeah. No, like, today is the future. Like, All day. No. Every day. <laughs> so listen, how can people connect with you? What's, uh, I don't what's like nothing? people. Okay, okay, me neither. <laughs> some days I, some day I, I strive. I get out the bed. I do a good job of making it don't look like I really me. Like I got enough work. shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Ron Finley. Uh, was it Ron Finley HQ on Instagram? Ron Finley Project on Instagram. Um, all that spare change you guys have in your bank accounts, in your car, you know, uh, in in the bottles. You can just send that to us, and we we're gonna put it to good use. Um, and uh, info at ronfinley.com if you really, but don't call me. Say, how can I plant a tomato plant? I, they got Google for that shit. <laughs> you know, so use it. Don't bother me. No, man, I, you'd be surprised. Dude. But yeah, no. Um, if, let, I, the bottom line is we're up here and we try to change lives, and both of us are doing just that. Uh, and the bottom line everybody can do it you can do your you can do your small part don't don't wait around for somebody to save your life you know you should be saving your own lives and then saving your own that person another person's life and together i uh, i got a collection ticket i got a collection with the gap t-shirts and i did this thing i painted these benches that says we grow and then one of them just says together but it can go the other way together we grow so the Gap took a bunch of my little things like that and they got a collection of kids to adults and t-shirts and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is we do it like we do this for the culture. We do this for our people. And a lot of times our people don't re ain't responsive to it, you know? So, and we can't do this without you guys. And we, we literally want to see a vibrant, beautiful, um, artistic, creative, uh, giving black society. You know, it's enough of us where we can build, and that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're doing. Yo, y'all give it up for Ron Finley. <laughs> Any last Thank words? That, that, was, that was a great last word. I, I try to point, I try to put a period on. I did it. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you got, you, got, you, got some, you got some more. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean. All of us, we just need to get out, go out and plant some shit. You know, period. It's that, it's that simple. That's how we're going to change this planet. That's how we're going to change our lives. And uh, the whole shovel project that you mentioned, uh, it's, man, it's been years. But it started from, like, you know, I said, let a shovel be your weapon of choice. You know, we don't need a gun or bazooka. Uh, or flamethrower or, or machete. Let's get a shovel and put something in the ground so I have artists from all over, known and unknown, who have painted or mosaiced or neon shovels for me. And in, the, in this beautiful social exhibit that we plan to take up to the streets and to um, galleries and museums in the near future. But yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, I'm here, D invited me here. And uh, and it's beautiful being here. I'm glad all you guys came out, especially with the pandemic and everything, that this could be the first one that we have. And I'm glad you, you know, that you 
made and invited me to be a part of this, guys. But literally, really, y'all, let's change our culture to where it's good. So, you know, we got kids killing each other over tennis shoes, you know, or a bag of weed, you know. And, and it's, it's like, so that shows that there is no value. I don't have no value, so I can take your life over a pair of tennis shoes, over a phone, you know, and it's real. And we need, we we are the ones that need to stop that. All right, yo. Y'all give it up for Ron Philly, man, again. Thank you so much for coming.